Hey friends, thank you so much for watching the video. I recently picked up this PS3 Super Slim in our job lot with a few other consoles. It was two Nintendo Wiis, one Xbox 360 Slim with three controllers, two PS3 Fats, and this PS3 Super Slim. All untested for $100. However, I tested everything. Everything works except for one PS3 Fat, which is fine because they usually never do nowadays. They're all just a bit dirty though. So today we're gonna tear down this PS3 Super Slim We'll give it a good bath because it's pretty filthy. We'll probably replace the thermal paste as well because usually when you pull apart a PS3, you have to replace the thermal paste because you separate the board from the heatsink. And yeah, so let's get stuck straight into it. So stick around, watch me do that, and please enjoy. Firstly, you'll need to remove this cover by sliding it towards the back of the console. Then we can remove the Phillips head screws holding down the hard drive. Then remove the hard drive itself. There are three torque security screws to remove using our Torx T9 bit. On the underside, we can remove three rubber feet and the warranty sticker if your console hasn't been harassed before. Then remove four Phillips head screws. Back on the top, we need to take off the plastic covers. The front one is an absolute nightmare to remove. You need to pry up on the front half as well as just the left side of the back half, then lift up the right side and slide it all out to the left, if that makes sense. The other cover is much easier to remove. You just need to push in this tab and the whole thing slides to the left. All that's left now is two Torx screws in the disk drive, four Phillips screws in the front, and one Phillips screw in the top right corner. Now the top cover lifts off to reveal a very tidy PS3. So clean that I don't even need to open it up anymore. Honestly though, I don't know why I'm surprised anymore. We all know that PS3s and PS4s are essentially vacuum cleaners, sucking up all nearby dust for their entire lifespans. Anyways, on with the teardown. Firstly, we can continue with the top shell. There is this bracket, which in my case I believe is unused. Either way, it just slides out. Then the brake for the disc can come out by removing this one screw, spring, and sliding it out. Now for the fun part. I definitely recommend taking some reference photos here, so you can remember how it all goes back together. After removing the two screws, the bracket comes out which then fires the trebuchet. After that, it all quickly falls apart. On the top, the door can unclip by flattening it out and lifting one side up. The laser is the first thing we'll remove on this side. There are three ribbon cables that slide out, but the bigger one needs to be unclipped from the sides first. The laser can then easily be pulled apart further if needed. power switch can just be lifted up and out. The 
The power supply is held in by two screws and one plug. With those out, it can then be lifted off the main board. There will be some resistance as the underside is directly plugged into the board. The power supply can then be pulled apart by removing the four screws and hoping that no one notices your sneaky screwdriver change. It is then clipped together. I'll be honest, the clips are a massive pain to unclip. It's not too bad overall, but the area where the plug is just did not want to separate and took me a good chunk of time. After some struggling, the covers can separate and the power supply just lifts out. Back on the main board, we can remove these plugs to get them out of the way. We can then remove the outer 5 black screws and the two silver screws in the middle. With those out, the board can lift off the shell. The trim pieces at the front are only lightly clipped in and can be removed fairly easily. Now we can unscrew and remove the two aerials, as well as unplug the fan on the way. It's easy to remember which wire goes where as it's marked on the board. White is Wi-Fi and black is Bluetooth. Now we remove the four outer screws and the two for the heatsink. The first shield should lift off easily. However, the board may be glued to the second shield due to the thermal paste. If that's the case, only lightly pry up on the board and just take your time. Then there are three screws holding down the fan shroud, and then that all just comes apart. And there we are, that's all the internals of a PS3 Super Slim, and it's safe to say there is a lot. And of course it's all so damn filthy. Looks like this one has been sucking up dust non-stop for the last 10 years. Either way, it's bath time for this bad boy. For the internals, I'll just use the standard isopropyl alcohol, multiple cotton buds, a dry paintbrush for dusting, and my handy dandy toothbrush.
Removing old thermal paste is the bane of my existence, honestly. This stuff is just so sticky and it just spreads everywhere. I soak it in alcohol for a bit, give it a scrub, then use so many cotton buds and paper towel to wipe it clean. It's the exact same process on the board, however I was just a bit more careful when it came to scrubbing the chips. Finally, everything is nice and clean, and it's time to slap it all back together. There are many ways to apply thermal paste, however the method that works well for me is to apply a blob in the middle of the chip, and allow it to spread itself out when being bolted back down. Also that was probably too much paste for the smaller chip, but she'll be right. The cogs are a bit difficult to reinstall, however the most important bit is that you need to wind this cog to have enough tension on it so it can open the door, then hold it in place while installing everything else around it. And there you go, we're all done. I've got Fallout New Vegas loaded up. As you can see, it works well, and now it's actually clean. Uh, there was quite a lot of dust in there. I didn't realize how bad it was, but I suppose that's the go with consoles these days. You always get them, well, I always get them, and they're always just filthy, just so bad. But um, I'm filming this the next day because uh, this just took a lot longer than I thought. This is by far more fiddly than any other PS3. I guess just because it's so compact, everything's just tightly fit in there, and it's just a bit of a process, especially to do while filming, but I imagine it wouldn't take nearly as long if you were doing it yourself but not filming it. A couple things, uh, as you probably saw on the base, there was a sticker. I took the sticker off, but the residue is just so persistent. I cannot get it off. I tried isopropyl alcohol. I tried acetone. I just, yeah, it's just not coming off, so I guess that'll be there for a while until I find something a bit more effective to get rid of it. Also... There are quite a few clips on this thing, um, so if you're doing this yourself, uh, definitely be careful because I broke two tabs just on the plastic cover that covers the hard drive. Um, sliding that off, I broke a tab, and then as I was cleaning it, I broke another tab. Um, there's just a lot of clips, so it tends to be the, the go with that type of stuff. You just got to be careful. I glued them back on. It's all fine. But yeah, overall, um, I'm really happy with this. Uh, the blue, obviously, is a bit of a rarer color, so happy to have that on the collection. And yeah, 10 out of 10. Cool, cool, cool. 
Okay, thank you so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, do all the things, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.